Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I doled myself a little bit up with the red just to add a bit of color. We had this weird weather, weeks and weeks, gray skies. It's gray all day long with a lot of rain. And so, yeah, I just, I need some color in my life. So I thought I'll bring some color as well. So I don't want this intro to be too long. Hopefully it'll be nice and short because I want to dive into painting. However, there are a couple of things I want to share. So first of all, exciting news. I am running a spring sale and you can enjoy 50% off my courses, except for the very latest one that is still, I think, on full price, but everything else, including some of my best selling courses with contemporary color palettes, etc., is all 50% off. It's a rare chance I ever do these sales. In fact, I haven't done one like that globally across all of the courses. So you can enjoy this sale until end of March. So make sure you check it out. It's on Alona Creates Teachable. I'll leave all the links down below. And the coupon that you can use to get the 50% off is Spring Half Off. So all in capital letters and that way you can enjoy the courses. So if you ever wanted to enjoy a few courses but thought they might be a little bit pricey, then this is the time where you can actually, for the price of one, enjoy a few of those courses pretty much. Also check out my website, alonacreates.com. You might find some products on sale there too. If you're from Canada, please check out my Etsy shop, Alona Creates, because I wasn't able yet to add Canada to the countries I can ship to at the minute on my website, online shop. And so therefore I am selling for Canadian customers on Etsy. So that way everyone can uh, get the products if they wish so. Before we dive into painting, which I desperately need to do, I just wanted to share with you a quick update. I think you saw this box in my last vlog. So this is where I'm keeping now the oil sticks. And if you remember, Apart from keeping all the colors, I still had this kind of glass here or the little cup, coffee cup, where I was keeping a few of those colors. And one of them was the gold, which was leaking. So the gold is the one that I picked up and it looked like it leaked. But at that point, I didn't pick up all the others. Now, I discovered that I had another color that leaked even more than the gold. So in the gold, there is kind of like that um, oil that separated. So it was more clear what leaked out. However, in the other one, it was the paint. So I'll show you inside here so you can see that color. So what I've done now, I actually put some cling film over the leaky ones because once they start leaking, they become very sticky and they don't they don't dry basically. I don't know why, but I think that solution doesn't dry. The pigment eventually when you paint with these oil sticks, it does dry on paper or canvas. However, this leaky solution when it separates seems to be quite sticky let me just show you or tell you the color rather because i wrapped them okay so the color is red ochre and it's smudged right on top of it so it's a little bit annoying i i didn't know that they leaked before i started going through my art supplies it's quite useful to go through your bits and pieces if you had them for a while. These are not too old at all, couple of years maybe. So it's just a good thing to know. So now at least, you know, it's protecting the others. So what I've done is now I put all of these colors into this box and everything fits well. All of my colors are sitting in here, but the greens and the blues I have taken out and they now live in a separate box. And that's this box or tin rather, they're both metal and I showed it to you originally and now I have my blues and greens all separate here. Some of them you can't really tell what color they are. So for example, this is Prussian blue, but it might as well be a black. So 
this one you can probably see next to that it's a dark dark green but again just briefly looking at it you might think it's some sort of a black so that's why it's useful to have these colors separately in trays so that you can quickly grab them but you can always read the name obviously <laughs> but depends in what kind of mood i am if i am in the mood of just getting the right color and not disturbing that thought then i don't want to just stop and then read the names if that makes sense so in terms of painting today i want to try and do something so i have mentioned in a previous couple of vlogs that i have been really enjoying modigliani's portraiture and paintings and there is something unfinished about it but the style is so recognizable and so generally when I paint portraiture it's usually either with watercolor it could be a little bit of pencil but I don't think I've ever tried to do it with oil sticks or heav heavier medium like a more opaque medium and oil sticks I would imagine would lend themselves really well into that kind of blend so what you can see here on a cheek i could add a bit of color and then sort of uh, work with that so haven't tried it don't know how it's going to work uh, for me today there are a number of different things so for example you could use some heavy body acrylics which would give you texture you could use some gouache paints and then use pencils over the top that would create a lovely kind of pop of color or oil sticks but then of course you can't put anything over the top of the oil sticks because they would need a few days up to a week to dry so that they're not tacky to touch and you can apply another medium on top I really don't know where I'm gonna go today. It might be all very, very experimental and it may not look good. So I'm not aiming for a finished painting or illustration uh, as such. So today is going to be experimenting and trying to kind of draw faces. I think I'm not gonna do my pretty faces. I think I'm going to do more of this style of a face. So I'll see you at my desk. So. I have some acrylic gouache which is basically it kind of paints like a gouache paint so you can add water and you can dilute it but then it dries permanent so that's what I really like about these paints and I have a nice bit of a collection here and I am thinking of a color palette that is more me and although i love the colors here i'm going to start by doing a little swatch of colors to get a nice color palette together and then i will try and work on a slightly bigger size so this is a3 and kind of start somewhere whether we'll finish it today or not i'm not sure but we'll definitely start okay so i've got the oil sticks in these containers here they will be used last so i'm going to just put the lid on because they have a bit of a smell to them in terms of tools i kind of like these tools so i've got three brushes purely because of their sizes so i'm going to use the dina wakely media brush which is quite big the medium sized is slightly softer because it's a jackson's icon brush three quarter this is one and a half inch and then this one is half an inch so the dina bakeleys have hard bristles and slightly softer for the icon so it's good for more of a watercolor look but you can also use them with acrylic paints as well and then of course my beloved spatula i'm going to start today with an underpainting i do like this whole idea of having some sort of a background and some sort of a texture before we go on to the actual painting so i'm considering this trio which is different tones of blue and we have got here light blue misty blue and pale blue so let's start with the lightest one here so first was misty blue pale aqua and light blue
I'm also going to mix them on the paper to see what kind of colors we can get. So those are nice blues. So then I want some colors that will pop really nicely. So there is leaf green. That's a great color to go with this type of a blue. I'll try to mix it in, see what kind of color we get here. And then I think I'm going to go into something orangey. In fact, I still need to do a swatch card for my oil sticks because I have no idea what colors they are. Oh, this one now stuck to that color. Let's see, red umber. I want something orangey red. What's this one? Mars Violet or Lizarin Violet Lake. Oh, this is also a Lizarin Violet Lake. I've got two of them. So this red might be good, but it's a bit opaque, I think. What's this one? Burnt Sienna, that's it. I think I want a Burnt Sienna and we've got Mars Red. I don't remember which one I prefer, Mars Violet or Mars Red. My desk is just way too small to work in the size that I want to work. So this is the Mars Red that I've just done now. The one before is Mars Violet. And then we have Burnt Sienna. So Burnt Sienna is also good. It's less red though. So I think this color would be nice to pop with. And of course now we need to tie it all together. So we've got the darks, we've got slightly brighter colors there. I think we need this type of color here. And that doesn't need to be the same medium. In fact, I can go and grab a color <clears throat> from another medium. So let me just do that. So I realized I don't have this color in acrylic paint, surprisingly, and I will have to mix up something myself. So I've taken the transparent Indian yellow hue, which I really love, and then I'm going to add a bit of olive green and maybe even some antelope brown to try and get it to that kind of mustardy type of a yellow green. So let's try and mix something ourselves here. So we've got a bit of yellow. There are usually balls, but they get so stuck in the bottom of it that it takes a while to mix up the whole color to get it to the right consistency. Otherwise you'll have like separation of ingredients in there. Okay, so here we go. I think I'll just drop a few drops in there and same thing with antelope brown did i say that this is a olive green so that's gonna go here <clears throat> it's a lovely color on its own but if you wanted to mix up something interesting and what we have here is this yellow touch of green that's quite quite close actually touch of antelope brown and there we go so that's good that works well for me I'm gonna keep that mix up here first maybe I'll do like a small portraiture let's see we're gonna start by mixing some of these colors and remember we don't want them to be necessarily that bright so I may need to mix them up and I'm going to add some of the blue and the so that was light blue and this is misty blue just to bring down the brightness slightly and I'm going to use a big brush here mix it up and then just do like a 
on the painting. Like so. Quite often I like the look of a really bright colour as an underpainting because that can have an interesting look peeping through the other layers that you will work on. I think I'm gonna go change into a uh, jumper because my sleeve just keeps on coming down. It's a kind of satin fabric so just too smooth and doesn't stay up and I can't focus that way. <laughs> so we've got some color here and I might actually bring in this color into some areas like that there's a bit of this a bit of the green and then slightly a bit more water and we're losing now the transparency of this paint so generally you can just add a little bit and then a bit of water it's of course going now milky because of that so I'm going to just use a bit of tissue might be an idea to just dry this and then add the contrasting blob at the end so this is somewhat now dry and I'm going to try and just put a bit of this paint in some areas and then just use a spatula to just kind of drag it down a little bit. Okay, I think this is becoming a bit too much. This is purely me experimenting. Also important to stick all the other brushes inside the water jam. Those are, um, they have the metal going quite high up, so you're not gonna damage the wood of the brush. And so therefore, when working with acrylic paints I quite like sticking the brushes in there I wouldn't do it with my other brushes okay so I'm going to go with a portrait pink which is sort of like a Caucasian type of a skin tone but it will need to be mixed up with a bit of something so I might go for a kind of color from here because you know we generally don't have that skin tone it's close but you need to do a little bit of work to bring it to the right color so in fact I'm going to try and let's see got enough wetness in the brush I'm going to try and add some of this antelope brown into here and then I need also a touch of pink I might go as far as using a tiny bit of opera pink literally the smallest amount pink then again a bit of antelope brown that's good enough okay so what we're aiming here for is to create some sort of a skin tone some sort of a neck and then we're going to dry that maybe a little bit of the body and I generally like hair, but I don't know what kind of hair I'm going to go. Maybe something that's not too much of a style. Okay, drying this now. Okay, so that gave us a good idea where I want the body to be. I am now going to go into the flesh ochre. And actually this is not dry enough, so I'm going to use a tissue to dab it off. And into that we're going to now layer oil stick which means then we'll have to wait for it to dry and come back to it in a few days but I'm just going to set the scene so I think she's going to be looking that way so this is probably her chin I'm going to elongate it slightly and then her starting to look like an alien there um, hair wise I think I like that bit nice so I'm gonna go for Mars red just 
I have to say this is so not my style but I'm kind of curious I like that sort of unfinished look sometimes in other painters work I'm just going to bring in some of this color that we had mixed up okay we need a bit of an ear and we need to bring a bit of like a different color into this I might just add it to the hair Okay, so this will take a few days to dry and then we can carry on with the face. Am I loving these colors? Do they feel like me? I'm not sure they do. So either I'm gonna just bring something quite bright and light or try to add a little bit of color here and there. I think this is a bit better but of course it's not contrasting enough but that's fine okay I'll leave it at that and we'll see it again in a few days time okay so the thing with me is generally I like to see a result immediately so using oil sticks at the last part of the painting I enjoy so for example in abstract art however when I need to revisit the painting in a few days I don't know how I'm going to feel whether I'm still going to feel it at all so basically that I'm going to leave there but now I want to look at acrylic paints because they give me a more instantaneous look and I can kind of work on it to make it feel more finished. I'm still going to go ahead and work on the background, which I'm not sure is the right thing, but I'm just going to be daring today. So I'm using cadmium red medium hue and it's heavy body acrylics by Liquitex and this is the cadmium yellow medium hue. I don't usually paint with these colors so they're great for mixing and I'm hoping to mix up a super bright orange. I'm gonna go and change the water actually or maybe not. Maybe it will help me to add interest. So I'm just gonna go I feel like I'm back at college experimenting. I'm feeling uncertain <laughs> about this, but hey ho. So I'm just going to do this, which is super, super bright, and I'm just going to add some opera pink right on top. And that's also creating a lovely bit of brightness. Okay, so I think this is good here. So this needs to dry and then on top of it I'm going to try and paint. So I have decided to do a third kind of trial and this time I swapped actually for my Meden porcelain water compartment. By the way use my Meden code which I'll leave down here for you if you want 10% off of products. Now I'm thinking of actually creating a watercolor background. For that however I don't want to use watercolor, what I want to use is acrylic inks. So I've got a fluorescent and I've got antelope brown. So if you look at them here, here we've got the fluoro pink and antelope brown. To create a watercolor effect, generally what I do is just drop some of this paint onto the paper 
and just use a really wet brush to create a lovely kind of effect. This paint is just so beautiful. And you can see, you can consider it as art as it is already. And I'm just going to straighten some of these ends here. Just make it a bit more straighter. I think I'll leave this bit here. If I wanted some darkness over here, actually, I'm just holding it with my lac at the bottom. I can just drop in some of these marks as well. So we've got something here. And I think I will leave it at that. Maybe just move this paint slightly more. I love acrylic markers. I think they are more me than all the other backgrounds. I'm just going to create a little run and then just let it sit. Okay, so let's come back when it's all dry. So I'm back to the red background and it's a little bit wet in some areas, but more kind of tacky than wet. So what I'm thinking is starting to place the face and I've got a couple of colors here, light portrait pink, Titan Mars pale and Titan buff. So I'm thinking of mixing up these colors and just lay the base. So we've got some of this. Maybe I'll use the flush, eh? Straight up from here. Like that. Maybe a strange color to mix with the pink. But this is how true art happens when you don't use your kind of mind and the logistics behind what you think will work will not and just go for it. So I'm going to just add a face somewhere around here. So this is supposed to be the red color is the underpainting. So we want this color to be popping out in some areas. So roughly speaking, this is our face here yeah, with the neck. Again, this needs to dry. And then this painting, you can see these areas are still a bit wet. So I'm going to do the same mix. And I'm thinking I'm going to pick up some of this paint. That could work quite well. So this is a more pinker version of the previous color, which I think I'm all right with. Keeping in mind, like I said, I think I'm going to getting that antelope brown mixture into it and let's see what happens so I'm going to map out the neck quite like this mixture here and blend of colors and mediums. I think it's adding a lot of interest. All right. Okay, so that can also dry now. Okay, so what to do with this background is a really good question because at the moment it's just so out there and so bright. So I do like this kind of pink coming through here. So I think I will definitely save some areas. So this area here looks quite good to me. I'll try to use maybe some oil pastels in this case rather than oil sticks to just bring some color in. So I'm going to dry this layer now. 
So I think I'm going to try the Sanadier Oil Pastels, 24 Portrait Assorted Colors. And I love the pastels by Sanadier. They're super buttery, super gorgeous, but I'm always worried to use them because they never fully dry. So they need to be set with a fixative. And even then you need to be quite sort of wary of it. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm just going to maybe block out some areas here, create some interest within the background and maybe push the red down, but have it peep out in certain areas. So to do that, I am going to pick lighter colors. So I've got a color here, which is titanium buff. And it's super, super buttery. So it's kind of a lot of fun to do that with. And it's actually a good color to go onto the actual skin here area. Maybe actually I'll start with the body itself. Usually I paint eyes in and I like to have a bit of makeup in there but in this particular situation because I'm painting with a medium that's really not mine I'm kind of I'm not familiar with I'm kind of trying to have my usual style but also keeping in mind that this is just a completely different experience and you know how to tackle the whole thing is of course another question so just going to try create a face i think with this type of situation you need to be very very patient with yourself of a cheek or a blush. I want something quite light. Actually a bit too light. So I'm just using the remaining color of the lip just to bring that color. I have to say it looks quite bizarre because it's so soft and I tend to have detail in my work so a little bit unusual at the minute go with the eyebrow and I'll bring some of this lovely color somewhere else might make some of these colors on the paper See what happens. This is such a beautiful color. It's called Chinese orange. So here I'm just going to play with colors. Mason, which means I don't have that much time left and I don't like leaving things unfinished so it's something that I kind of need to <laughs> come to terms with and perhaps realize that I just need to give it a little break and come back to it tomorrow with fresh thoughts and add more kind of color to it I think I want maybe some darker hair just to kind of
Okay, I want to bring in some pink, um, not pink, some blue in some areas. And add a bit of a color. So I think that might suggest what she's wearing. Which is really quite bright. And it's a nice popping color. And the good thing with oil pastels is it, it doesn't need to have a starting and ending line. You can just sort of finish it in your own mind in a way. And then I'm going to add this really bright color here. Okay, I'm going to go back into this gray. Give her a bit of a bigger eye. Okay, so all of this still needs some work, but so far, this is where we got. I have very mixed feelings about this uh, girl here, but I'm also curious about where all of these will end up and including the other one let me just get that so this one here it's also quite wet still so yeah we'll come back to that later in the week and we'll carry on with the process i might actually use a fixative meanwhile okay so we'll leave it at that and i will see you in the next video thanks for watching